and I am going to introduce um, Mr. Derek Purdue. He is the uh, curriculum instruction and assessment uh, specialist at Simpson County Schools, specifically at Franklin Simpson Middle School. And uh, his topic today is video coaching, getting a clear picture of reality. Um, I'm really excited about this. I saw it a while ago and he did a great job and excited to uh, um, see round two. So Derek, without further ado, take it away. Awesome. All right, guys, we'll just go ahead and jump right in here. This is a kind of small group. So if you have any questions at all as we go throughout this, just, just go ahead and jump in. Say what you need to say. There's not many of us in here, so we'll just kind of field questions as we go through if you have any questions about anything. I kind of mentioned this in the last one. You know, the material I have on here is really enough to cover about an hour's worth of time, um, but I'm squeezing it into 30 minutes. So if I talk fast or go too fast, just let me know, um, and I'll slow down. And, uh, of course, you guys can always email me and, and whatnot. My email address is right here. You can also find it on the, the grid there if you click on that resource page. Uh, there is a copy of this PowerPoint presentation on there. Um, there. There is a QR code at the beginning. I don't think it's quite working. I haven't refreshed it in some time since I lasted the presentation uh, a little while ago. So just find the, the slides through the, the resource page there. Okay, uh, we're going to start with these two questions, or three questions, excuse me. Um, and, and, and feel free to unmute, type in the chat box or whatever to answer these. And if not, we'll just kind of reflect and I'll give you some, some of my reflection on these things. Um, these questions kind of uh, help get us started here at, at Franklin Simpson Middle School with this process. The first one being, what type of coaching system do you currently have within your school or within your district? And when I say coaching system, we're not necessarily talking evaluation system. We're talking coaching. Um, what do you believe to be the most important aspect of coaching teachers? Um, so what makes that, that coaching session or that time valuable? What is important? And then um, how do you receive coaching? Um, how did you receive coaching when you were in the classroom? Okay, because um, that's very different now than what it might have used to have been. So if anybody wants to unmute and answer those questions, feel free to. If not, then, then I, will, I'll, I just want you thinking about those things as we go throughout this. All right, so I'll start with, with this, you know, the, the, that last question, how did you receive coaching when you were in the classroom? Um, and, and a lot of times when we sit down and we at, think about that question, the answer to that was we didn't really receive a whole lot of coaching, okay? Um, we, were, we were evaluated and we were given feedback from time to time, right? But as far as sitting down with somebody and just really working on how can we get better at what we do, um, you know, that that didn't exist, you know, a, a while ago. Um, coaching has kind of become a thing that's kind of picked up in the last several years. And there's been various ways about doing it. And this is a way that we chose here at Frank Simpson Middle School to kind of get started with it. Um, Everything we're about to talk about is, is based on the research of Jim Knight. I don't know if any of you guys have read any of these books, but, but all four of these are really good resources when it comes to coaching teachers and trying to get them to be the best that they can absolutely be for students. Um, we started with the impact cycle, which we'll, you'll hear more about here in a minute, um, which just kind of guides us through the coaching sessions. Uh, we gave every teacher in our building a copy of High Impact Instruction, uh, which is one of the best books I've ever read. Um, it is full of instructional strategies that teachers can use. Um, it's not a bunch of fluff, okay? They're just instructional strategies that work. Um, and so we gave every teacher in our building a copy of that book to just kind of do a book study with us on. Um, <clears throat> Focus on Teaching just goes into more detail about the video coaching aspect of things. And then the instructional playbook, just kind of walks you through how to make a playbook. Um, I used to be a basketball coach, so coaching is something that is very dear to my heart. Um, and just like coaches coach their players, um, coaches need to coach teachers as well. Um, so the instructional playbook kind of helps guide us through that. Um, and this book is, does a very good job of explaining how to um, how to um, go about that and make, make that work in your building. Um, <clears throat> this quote here is very important. Okay, the video coaching process is the missing link between moving research into practice. A lot of times with teachers, we throw a lot of stuff at them. We, we throw uh, this strategy, that strategy, do this, do that. This process really helps us narrow down what do we need to do to be the best that we can absolutely be. And so it takes that research and moves it into actually doing something. 
Um, so why, why video coaching? Um, first off, all great coaches, if you're talking athletics, you're talking in education, okay, are masters at analyzing film, okay? Um, they sit down and they work with their players and they show them the things that they need to do better in order to reach their full potential, right? Um, coaching teachers is exactly the same. Sitting down, showing them what reality actually looks like, um, and then getting the most out of them through those sessions. Um, using video coaching process allows coaches to gain a better understanding of what their players, and in this case, the teachers are. Um, when you can sit down and you can look at exactly what teachers look like and teachers can see themselves on that screen in action, a lot of times they're going to point out the things that they need to improve on themselves um, because you can't argue what reality looks like. Um, Oftentimes, teachers don't know what reality looks like until they're, they're seeing that. Um, a lot of times, you know, when we go into classrooms, we'll do walkthroughs, right, and we'll leave feedback, and then they have to think back, oh, well, what was I actually doing in that, that sense? With the video, they can go right back to the moment that it happened and the feedback was given. Um, one thing for us, the growth in our teachers that we see has just been phenomenal over the last three years. This is our fourth year uh, implementing this process. And of course, we've tweaked it a lot um, between um, when we started. Uh, one thing being when we first started, we used to follow teachers around with an iPad, which was just terrible. And you could hear me breathing and it was brutal. Um, so we invested in the swivel cameras and that kind of thing um, to kind of get the process going. And so it's really been an eye opening experience for teachers. Here are some things to just kind of keep in mind. Um, we believe that this process must be completely teacher driven, okay? If it's driven by the admin, then it's just not as successful. Um, so we want the process to be completely teacher driven. And when I say that, you know, the conversations between the coach and the teacher, uh, we want the teacher to drive most of the conversation uh, just because they get the most growth when they are in charge of their improvement. Um, we do not want the process to feel like it's an evaluation. Um, it's strictly used to help teachers improve their craft, okay? So they know when they go through the video coaching process, we are not evaluative. We are not trying to evaluate them. We are simply just trying to help them get better for the evaluation when that does come. Um, setting up a schedule for videoing your teachers will help keep things consistent. When we first started, we were just kind of all over the place, but now we, you know, we have a set schedule. Teachers know um, around when they'll be able to, when they're gonna uh, receive their video coaching and that thing. And that's really helped clean up a lot of stuff. Um, it can be very valuable. However, it must be followed through with. Just like anything we do, um, if we don't follow through with it, it won't be very successful. So here's here's our process. Um, all tenured teachers uh, go through the, or non-tenured teachers go through the video coaching process. So every teacher in our building who is non-tenured um, goes through this, this process. Each ten teacher is filmed at an unannounced time. And a lot of people, when I do these presentations, ask, well, why, why do we do it unannounced? Why do we not tell them when they're coming? Well, Remember, we want a clear picture of what reality looks like. So the only way to get that is for it to be unannounced, right? Um, we want them to see what it looks like on a day in and day out you know, basis. Um, teachers go through the three steps of the impact cycle, which is identify, learn, and improve. We'll talk more about that here in a second. Um, we set goals for each of our teachers and they work throughout the year to accomplish that goal. Uh, we do not set multiple goals at a time. We work on one thing. Okay, at a time, a teacher, you may film a teacher and they may need help with classroom management and questioning and engagement. They may need help with all of it, but we focus on one thing at a time. So we may tackle classroom management and then we'll move to the next thing and the next thing. Um, the process is not completed until the teacher is satisfied with the growth. Okay, and I put teacher in all caps there because we remember we want it to be teacher driven. Um, the impact cycle, here's what it is. Here's the three stages, identify, learn, and improve. Uh, the first stage is simply just getting the video filmed, okay? Uh, we use the swivel camera here. We'll, again, we'll talk more about that in a second, um, but we want to capture what reality looks like, and then we give them a copy of our instructional playbook. So here at Franklin Simpson Middle School, we've created an instructional playbook, and I'll give you guys access to that so that you can look at that um, here in just a second. Um, but we really let that playbook drive what we see in our classrooms, okay? Nothing in that playbook 
is there if we don't believe it's important to be good at, okay? So we use that instructional playbook to kind of drive uh, how we coach and what we see. So every teacher in our building um, has a copy of that and they'll get that in this first stage. Um, the learn stage is where we teach the heck out of them, okay? Um, we, we teach, teach, teach. We give them the instructional playbook. We give them resources that they need to be able to accomplish that goal. It does us no good if we set a goal for a teacher and then we don't give them the resources to become good at what we're trying to tell them to be good at. Um, so we, we give them opportunities during their planning periods or other times if we have subs to cover um, to go see other teachers that are really good at whatever goal they set. Um, I myself will go in and model a lot of different things for teachers if, if they want that. And then we use the instructional playbook, of course, to just give them, you know, as many resources as possible to, to be able to accomplish the goal. And then we improve. OK, so we take that learning and then the teacher will then gather data on whether or not they're improving. So we'll do that in several different ways. We'll do that through, you know, just going in and having a conversation with the teacher. Uh, we may do many sessions is what we call them. We'll take the video camera back in there and then we'll film that specific goal and see have they improved from the first time to the second time. Um, and then so that process is just kind of ongoing uh, between the coach and the teacher. Uh, the coach and teacher meet to confirm the direction and monitor progress. So that's important to meet in person to talk about where do we go from here. Um, we take, we make changes to the plan and we set next steps uh, at each time we meet. Here's kind of how we do it at FSMS. Again, all non-tenured teachers are going to go through this. Um, however, we have a lot of tenured teachers that choose to continue to do this. Um, and it, it does get burdensome when you have a lot of people on your list to coach, right? Um, but if they want to be coached, then we want to provide that coaching. So we, all of our non-tenures, and then we have several tenured teachers who started out as non-tenured that are now tenured that want to continue the process. One, because they're able to see the growth that they've had in the classroom, as well as they see the growth their students have had because of their improvement, right? Um, each teacher has a folder um, that consists of the following documents, which I gave you guys access to. One thing I failed to mention, we do want this to be as completely opposite as of an evaluation as possible. All of our evaluation stuff is digital. So we made all of this paper pencil um, so that people know, hey, this is completely different. Um, so I keep a folder, I actually have them on my desk now, of everyone who's going through the process that houses all these sheets. We give them a sheet that shows them exactly what they should be looking for when they watch the video, because uh, that's important too. They need to know what to look for and how to watch it. Um, they have a baseline data collection sheet where they kind of fill some information out on themselves as they watch the video. Uh, they have a goal setting sheet that we fill out together when we meet. And then for every individual session we do after that, we collect data and whatnot um, on another sheet. Um, after watching his or her video, um, they meet with me and we discuss the things that we saw. Uh, one cool thing about the swivel camera is that you do have the ability to uh, make comments on the videos, which is super helpful. So when I film a, film a video and I go and I watch it, then I'm able to make comments on the video in real time as I watch it. And then when the teacher watches the video, um, those comments that I made or whoever's coaching them at the time um, will pop up as the teacher watches the video, which is so powerful. So they're able to see kind of what I'm thinking and they're able to make comments on the video so that I can see what they're thinking. So it's really collaborative um, in, in that sense. So that's a really cool feature uh, about the swivel. And then when we meet in person, we'll kind of talk through those comments and then move the coaching session from there. Uh, we do house everything in a Google Drive folder just to keep everything super organized. Google, Google Calendar is how we schedule everything. Um, the first film session, as I mentioned before, we do unannounced. Um, however, all additional film sessions we do schedule because at that point they're working on a specific goal. So we want to make sure that we are capturing that specific goal. Um, if you do not have a swivel camera, I, I highly encourage you to get one. They are kind of expensive. They're about a thousand dollars a piece. We have two. You can make it work with one. I had one for every year except for this year we finally bought another one this year but because we had so many we were doing it with um but they're a thousand dollars a piece but once you pay for that then you're pretty good i've had mine for four years now and it works just fine just like it did when i opened it out of the box so um they're very durable uh kids get used to them being in the classroom as well that was a the, something that that people ask so let's explore a little bit 
Um, there's some links on this, and I don't have time to just click on all of them. I would if, if, if we had a little bit more time, but we just don't have the time. So I encourage you to go through uh, and click on uh, these links just to kind of get familiar with kind of what we do. Um, these paper pencil forms are here. You, you can click on those, those links, and I've linked those in the resource guide as well um, for you guys to just have a look at, and that's, that's those here. The instructional playbook is the one that I really want to show you. Um, we created this again about three years ago, uh, and we've kind of edited and improved it every year. Um, but this playbook is what drives our instruction here. Okay, so we have, you know, different categories, lesson design, student engagement, assessment, curriculum, and classroom environment. We believe every strategy follows falls under those categories. Um, so if you if you click on assessment, so say someone sets a goal and they want to be better at formative assessment, so they can click on that. And they can see exactly what we expect formative assessment to look like here at Franklin Simpson Middle School. And we also give resources here at the bottom. So some of these are videos. Some of these are just various resources to help you be better at that. Um, we've been doing this for quite, a, quite some time now. So when we have teachers who do a really good job with a certain, um, uh, certain strategy, we'll upload their swivel video down here so that others can see, oh, that teacher really knows how to do this well in their classroom so that they can learn from their peers. Um, so this is used and as I said, everybody in our building has a copy of this and they just kind of go um, through this and they set their goals off of this. Um, we want to make sure that whatever we're trying to improve on is something that we see is valuable. So everything ties back to this uh, in the strategies that are here. Of course, you can explore this all you guys want to since you guys have the links and whatnot. We do have over here, the stages that they'll go through. And at the beginning of the year, every, for everyone who's doing the video coaching, we do have a PD and we walk them through exactly the process. Um, and a lot of these are Jim Knight's videos, but he goes through each stage of the process so that they can see, oh, this is how coaching is gonna be handled. Um, and so that's been very helpful for us. We just added this the last year, um, but, but teachers seem to really like hey, this is what we're going into. This is what I can expect in, out of these sessions kind of thing. So I encourage you to just, you know, take some time to, to kind of explore um, this instructional playbook. Excuse me, I got to move all these things down so I can get back to my presentation here. Um, this guide here is something I would also encourage you to take a look at. Um, I made this, I had a district contact me and say, hey, um, we've seen some of your presentations. It'd be great if you would make an implementation guide for us so that we would know exactly what you did to get this started at your school. Uh, it took us about six months, so that's exactly what I did. I just kind of marked the months that I, what I did and, and what I did in each month here. So you can go through. I don't have time to read it all, um, but this is kind of what we did um, to get this started um, between the first and second year. Um, so just take a look at that. There's some resources here at the bottom that I linked, our instructional playbook, um, and all the links to the books that we use as well are there. Um, there is one cost, and I'm going to give you a little secret here if you choose to do this. Um, the swivel folks will try to sell you that you have to pay $75 a year for each person um, that's getting coaching, but that that is that is actually not true. Only the person who is the coach has to pay that license. Um, so I we we purchase one license um, each year for the swivel camera, um, and essentially all that does is allow you to make the comments on the video. But as long as the coach makes the comments first, and that coach can share the video to anybody that they want to, and then they can make all the comments they want to. So it's kind of a loophole. Don't tell the swivel people. I'd like to just only pay seventy five dollars a year. Um, <laughs> but that's been working for us um, for now. So that's that's something to just keep in mind as well. Um, so take a look at that. I think that you'll you'll gain a little bit just from looking at our implementation and kind of how how we got it all good and started. I do have um, a video here of some of our teachers, and I'll I'll kind of skip around on this. It is about five minutes long, but these are this is some of our teachers uh, talking about the process. So you'll see me skip around a little bit through the video, just because I don't want to make you sit through five minutes of a video. But um, I'll go ahead and start that, and hopefully you'll gain something from it. The video coaching experience has been super beneficial because it allows you the opportunity to be able to seek kind of yourself teaching from an out of body experience you're able to interact with your kids and focus on teaching a lesson but then you're given the opportunity to kind of look back at yourself from another viewpoint and one of my favorite things about it is it allows me to see my body language 
It allows me to see how the kids feed off me, off my energy in class. Am I putting off a good energy? Am I putting off a bad energy? A lot of times, you know, we talk about classroom management and all these classroom management techniques, but a good amount of that can always just be handled with having a good atmosphere in your classroom. And am I the kind of teacher that's putting off this good atmosphere? Or when I look back at this video, do I see myself as sluggish? Do I see myself as being um, slow, to, slow to help, slow to speak, slow to encourage? Or am I energetic? Am I hyper? Am I doing all these different things to help promote the atmosphere in my classroom? That is that we're here to learn self reach these goals that I had set for myself. And, and in a time and an age where so much that stuff that we do is, is videoed or on video. It's such a powerful tool to allow us teachers to look back and learn from what we are doing. Being a young teacher, uh, just finishing up my third year, you know, I love the opportunity to look and learn and better myself so that as I mature and as I grow in my teaching career, I'm able to look back and learn from, well, that didn't go so well. And I can see that that didn't go so well from this video and, oh, I need to tweak this lesson or I need to, I need to watch how I approach this student or how I approach this class that allows me to grow into what I hope and believe would be a much better, a much more mature and a um, much better overall middle school math teacher. And I don't believe without the video coaching, there's no other way for you to be able to see yourself in action. And I think seeing ourself in action and finding a way to respond to that, uh, whether it be positive or negative, I'm all experience and one I hope to continue. I am really grateful for video coaching and for all of the hard work that Mr. Purdue has put in with me in this whole process. I really feel as though without video coaching, it would have taken me a little bit longer to really master the way that I use assessment in my instruction. And I feel as though video coaching is part of the reason that I was able to improve that area of my instruction so quickly and to be able to get the scores that I've gotten on my last several observations. As a veteran teacher, I really enjoyed the video coaching process. It removes the objectivity from coaching. Um, not only am I allowed to review my lesson before I submit it to my administrator, but it allows me to pick and choose the times that I'm going to be observed. So it kind of takes out that anxiety of when are they going to show up? How do I prepare? What if they come in on a bad day? The kids are used to the video coaching now. They're comfortable with the equipment, so they kind of know what to expect as well. And it just makes it an overall more comfortable process for everybody. And then I love being able to sit down and watch my lesson after it's been recorded. I like to be able to see things from the coach's eyes. I feel like it gives me more experience and experience that I will use as I move forward in my teaching career as well. So, and what's going on and, and also explain um, things that I have already found that I can improve upon. So it allows me the chance to show how, as a professional educator, I watch, reflect, and adapt my teaching through the use of the video coaching process. All right, so that, whoop, here we go. I'm not trying to watch the in here. All right, so that's just some of our teachers here at our building who have gone through the process over the years. So you can just kind of hear, you know, how valuable it is, is to them. Um, so if there's anyone who has any questions, I think we have about four, three, four minutes here left. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them now, or if you don't want to ask them now, you can always shoot me an email. I think I got my email right here on this next slide. So you can jot it down um, if you would like to do that and feel free to call or whatever. I'll be happy to help in any way I can if this is something you want to get started at your school. Cynthia, Stacy, do you guys have any questions or thoughts before we wrap this up? No questions. Oh, thank you very much, Derek. I have a refrigerator being installed in my background, so <laughs> that's why I, I muted. I very much enjoyed this, Derek, uh, and I may be in touch. Um, I've been interested in video coaching, and I don't know much about it. So, Perfect. anyway, uh, absolutely. Sorry. I really was listening and everything. I just, you know, had the refrigerator being installed. You're good. You're good. Okay. Just feel, feel free to shoot me an email anytime. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you guys. Um, 
I, I echo, I, I was an administrator and we started doing video coaching and it was, it was a really powerful thing. So thank you, Derek, uh, for, for giving this presentation and this idea for, for principals to use in their schools. It, it, it really, it really can be a, um, game changer in, in my opinion. So looks like, uh, we are, um, on a lunch break until 110. So at 110, we'll be back or that's 1210 Central Time, 110 uh, Eastern Time. And uh, it'll be round seven. And I think there's two rounds after lunch. So um, I'll see, I see you somewhere. I'll be, I'll still be in this room, but you might be elsewhere, but um, have a good lunch and we'll see you back here in a little while. Actually, awesome. there is a session going on where you can, um, you can opt to attend it. You don't have to. It's a lunch and learn. I think it's around oh. the legislative updates. It's in breakout room 10. Oh, yeah, that's great. That's good to know. Yeah, Wayne Young's in there. Wayne's a, he's powerhouse. So that's a good uh, it's a good uh, thing. Thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome.